Hey guys, welcome back. This is the fourth part in the tutorial series on creating your first website from scratch. In the first few parts, we went over very basic HTML and how that works, and then we set up the containers for the website, and then we set up the uh, header content, and that includes our logo here and our little navigation bar. In this video, we're going to try and quickly set up the uh, content section, the main content section, and for our website that includes our uh, thumbnails here and the title and short summary of whatever it is we are linking to, whether it be an article or whatever it is your website's about. So we're going to set this up and uh, the way this I did this here is we could have like the uh, the article's author and like the post date or whatever here. We'll do that in this video as well. So yeah, that's what we're going to try to do in this video. It shouldn't take us too long, but we may have to break that up into two separate videos. I'm not too sure. I'm not sure uh, how long it's going to take us to get through all that. So I made a little image in Photoshop for our thumbnails. And it's just a dummy image to take place of the thumbnails on the main page. Mine, I believe, is 200 by 100. I believe that's the correct dimensions. Okay, so let's jump right in here. And the first thing I want to do is correct a mistake that I made in the last video. And that was in our navigation bar that we made. Now what we should have done is wrapped this, since we're using HTML5 in this, uh, in this document here, we should have wrapped this in a new HTML5 tag that is nav. Now the direct benefits of this aren't really there, but it does add some semantics to the website, to the navigation. And all that does is it says that what's ever inside those two tags is an important chunk of links. It's what navigates you around something that's rather important. And I do believe that the main website's navigation can be classified as rather important. So what we could have done is actually styled the nav instead of ul, but there's no uh, specific reasons for that to be necessary, so we're just going to keep our styles with the ul. And what we could have done here is instead of actually going through the header, is went through the nav to the ul to the li, and been more specific with the nav. But since we're only going to have one header on this website, like you could use a header for each article and stuff like that with HTML5 to define the uh, the exact header for each article. But I don't think we're going to go that far with our HTML5 tags. Once again, this is a very basic tutorial, so we're going to keep it pretty basic. But we are going to wrap it in navs, and we're not going to give it a specific ID or anything, because it will be the only navigation tag on the website. Alright, so with that said, let's go ahead and jump into setting up the section content. The first thing we should do is uh, place our thumbnail image within the images folder. What we're going to do is wrap each row of uh, the content, like this thumbnail and the description and title of that thumbnail, or of that article or whatever it is we're linking to, we're going to wrap all that in a specific div so we can control it all together and we can separate it from these other ones here so we can separate them apart. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll say div and div. We're going to use the same div style for all three rows of content there. And an ID is a unique ID. You can only use that one time on a given page. So if I was to define wrapper and then define another wrapper, that's wrong and it's it's incorrect. So it can't go that route. So we have to use a different attribute that we can use multiple times in the same document. And the attribute we're going to use is called class. Now class works essentially the same way as the ID for the div works, or for anything for that matter. 
but uh, what class can do is it can be defined multiple times or it, it can be attached to tags and elements multiple times throughout a document. So we'll just give it a class of uh, like index post or something, just something that says that that's what the post will look like on the index page. And then inside that we would have uh, this is the post's information. Hit Control S to save that. Come to the web browser. F5 to refresh, and you get this is the post's information. Let's open up our style.css in Notepad. And uh, inside the section, or not inside, but under the section, I'm going to add a little comment. And what a comment is in uh, programming and uh, scripting and coding and stuff like that, markup language, a comment is just something that is not read by the engine or the browser in our case. And it's, it's pretty much just something so that we can look and get a, an idea of what it is. It can describe a block of code or something. So in our case, I'm just going to offset the classes for the section by using a comment. And in CSS, a comment is started by using slash, asterisk, asterisk, and slash. Anything within these two asterisks here will not be read by the, uh, by the browser. So I will say uh, start header classes. And now under this is where we will define the classes for the header. Now that is not required in any way. I just like to separate things so I can tell uh, where all my certain code is. So I don't go looking around for it. I can just see this and be like, oh, okay, all the classes for the header is under that. Even though this isn't the header, what am I doing? That's the section. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, that's the section. Anyway, so now we're going to define the classes. And you don't define the classes the same way you define an ID with the uh, hash key there. Instead, you define it with a period. You say period, and then the name of the class, so index post, voiced index post. And then the exact same thing applies after that. And this just says, hey, this is the name of a class. Just like this says, that's the name of an ID. All right, I was getting tired of all the vibration noises from my desk whenever I would type or click or anything, and it go blah, 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 blah. So I've uh, actually taken the time to descend my microphone from the ceiling because I don't have the funds currently to invest in proper equipment. But I believe this will uh, decrease the noise from moving my mouse and stuff like that because I know that could get really annoying pretty quickly. So we're going to see if this solves that issue. And uh, back to what we were doing. We were going to define the styles for the index post, which was this class right here. And what we're going to do is, uh, in this section here, we're going to get rid of the background color. And we're going to say we want to have the same amount of margin, top and bottom, as we do left and right. So we're going to say margin. And we're not going to define whether it's going to be left, right, top, or bottom. We're going to say all the margin is going to be the exact same. And we're going to say something like 15 pixels. Now hit Control S. Come to the browser and let's make sure that's going to work. All right, now what it's going to do is you notice it pushed this down. And that's because this now has uh, 30 more pixels, technically speaking, um, this way. So it's 30 more pixels wide, and that added 30 pixels to the overall width of the container. And since our wrapper did not expand with that, then we're going to have to uh, make the container 30 pixels slimmer. So it will fit within this area we have here for it. And you'll see what I mean by that right here. The width is 650, but since we added 15 pixels to the left margin, Ooh, actually, that all applies as well, but we want to make this padding, not margin. 
And we know what the difference between padding and margin is. Margin is uh, the outer padding, the outer space around it, and padding is the inner space. But anyway, that's still that's what I just said still applies to this. We want to knock off the what we added there to make it the same size it was. So in this case, since we have 15 pixels on the left padding and 15 pixels on the right padding, that equals 30 pixels. So we're going to want to remove that from the overall width. So it'll be 620 pixels. Control pickles. Control S F5 to refresh. And it's back where it should be. Okay, and you'll also notice that we've added uh, more height to it because we have 15 pixels on the top and the bottom as well. So that, that adds 30 pixels in the total height. So you'll notice that here that it's pushed the footer down off of this container because this container does not have uh, any padding applied to it just yet. So what we want to do is uh, we're going to keep the height the same, but we're going to add the same amount of padding over here. So it will equal it out just fine. Let's go ahead and do that now so we don't uh, get confused later on when we get there. I'm going to say padding 15 pixels. And that'll do the exact same thing. Refresh. And you notice it's, it's too wide again. It scoots it down there because it's too wide to fit in the area we have for it. So we have to take off the 30 pixels from the width here. So it'll be uh, 280. Control S, browser, refresh. And there we go. Now that I, I took away the background color, so it may not look as uh, organized as before, but you have to imagine still that they are divided between right through here.